Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about AMD stock. There's a new update coming out where they talk about TSMC's potential allocation in terms of manufacturing capacity for the main customers for 2026. There includes the NVIDIA, Broadcom, AMD, and we can see their expected COVOS capacity for each of these, for example, on this column there on 2026. But before we look at these numbers in details and what it actually means in terms of, for example, when you look at AMD's 105, how much billions of US dollar revenue and how many MI400 or MI355X AI GPUs will they be able to sell next year or also late this year, right? But before we look at that, we can just see quickly that the stock is going slowly up to 178 US dollar, getting kind of close to the all time highs of around 220 in, I would say, April or March 2024. We also know that the earnings is on the 5th of August, so that's going to be interesting. And ahead of the earnings, there's a few upgrades in terms of price targets from the analyst. UBS have increased their price targets from 150 to 210 yesterday. And today it was, I believe, Bank of America increasing from 175 to 200. So there's a lot of positive momentum going on for sure. But now let's go back to the point of this video. How much revenue they will be able to extract from this allocation from TSMC? So going backwards from like their final packaging step and how many MI400s will they be able to make based on this and that then also going backwards and see how many billions of US dollars in revenue that would be. So on this image you can see the previous generation MI300X and in order to understand what it means you can see that in here they're writing 8 XCDs. So what are these 8 XCDs? So when AMD manufactures this MI300 in this case they are producing eight smaller chiplets that they connect together. If you're interested in the details, please look at my previous video I made a couple of days ago called the AMD era is just beginning, where in this half an hour long almost video, I go into the details, what it actually means and the difference between AMD's design language and compared to the main competitors are the market leader, Nvidia, and what kind of technical advantages AMD can extract. That means also that would translate to financial power for this company. But going now back to specifically this ex example here on how many MI400s they be able to sell. So MI400 will also have eight XCDs. Knowing that we know that each XCD on MI400 should be around 90 square millimeters. Those are essentially a little bit smaller than those that we saw on MI300 due to the simple fact that MI300 was manufactured on an older, less dense node, the TSMC 5 nanometer while MI400 will be manufactured on the TSMC 3 nanometer, which is more dense. This is the reason why these, each of these XCDs that we are talking about is gonna go down in, in size of 115 or so square millimeters to 90 square millimeters. Now, that means also that from manufacturing step, from each of the wafers that AMD are using for 3 nanometer, they are gonna be able to extract 600 or so good dyes. And for each of the MI400 chips, they need to connect eight of those together with a bunch of other stuff, for example, HPM memory. Maybe this image here can show it more clearly. So the red ones, imagine it uh, as those, uh, those eight uh, XCDs. The green ones are the memory, so HPM memory, high bandwidth memory, the fourth iteration of those for MI400. And then a bunch of other stuff that combines in that COVOS package. So going back to this table here, we know that we have 90 square millimeters, we connect eight of those and we have 600 of good, good dice per wafer. Now, when you connect those eight, not always will the connection happen, you know, smoothly. You will have yet again manufacturing defects. So I'm assuming that they have around 15% packaging issue or packaging yield defects, which means that of those, let's say, 604 dice, once you combine them to packages of eight, you would have theoretically 39 good uh, MI400s. But after the packaging, you would have probably 33 or 32 MI400s per wafer. So now that we know that potentially AMD could have around, let's say, low 30s of MI400 per single wafer, all we need to do is to calculate, essentially takes the, the number of MI400s per wafer times the number of wafers, in this case 105. But I would have to mention that this 105 number here is not supposed to be all going to the AI GPUs. I believe 
certain amount of this number is going to AMD's other products. It's very difficult to know how much that is, but I assume that around 80 to 75 percent so the lion share is going to their AI GPUs and maybe 20 to 25 percent is going to other components or products. Knowing that, then we also take again here, we see that of those 105, if you take that number of uh, times 75 percent, you would get around just below 80,000 wafers for a single year, 2026, which means probably 8,000 or so wafers per month. But for the entire year of 2026, that would mean around 2.6 million MI400s. Now, obviously, not all of these, uh, you know, 2.6 million chips will be MI400. Why do I say that? Well, we know that MI400 is going to be launched at some point next year, but not immediately on January the 1st. Most likely, I mean, let's say late Q1 or even probably Q2. So that's when MI400 is going to be launched. Until then, they're going to rely on the MI355X, which is just recently launched. So in any case, that was just a thought experiment to show you that not all those two point, potential 2.6 million chips would be the latest and greatest MI400. But assuming of the rumors online, MI400 should sell around 25,000 US dollar per chip, at least on paper. But if you're a big company like Meta or customers like Microsoft and you buy hundreds of thousands of these chips, probably you're going to sign a specialized contract. And I would say the average sales price then probably falls down below 20,000, maybe even like 15,000 years. So I don't know. I, obviously, these are very rough estimates. But if you assume then that the likes of Meta would buy them at 17,500 US dollar each, and all those 2.6 million MI400s would mean 45 billion or so revenue for AMD already in 2026. Now, in my opinion, this sounds very, very much for AMD. That is essentially a quarter of what Nvidia does right now. So essentially that is Nvidia's quarterly revenue give or take. I don't believe like AMD can do that at the current state, but you shouldn't be, you know, scared that AMD not doing 45 billion revenue for 2026 only on MI400 is bad. Because let's look at my own previous numbers before this report came out, right? You can see that for this year, for example, Q1, I expected below 2 billion, which I would say based on the Q1 earnings is in the same ballpark. Why do I say that? So let's go to the AMD earnings and then scroll down to Q1 of 2025, total revenue of 7.4 billion, of which 3.6, 3.7 was from data center. And we know from previously that of those 3.7 billion, roughly 2 billion is from Epic, so their server CPUs, and the rest should be from their like AI GPUs, which would mean around 1.7 billion. So going back to my own other table here, you can see that I was calculating around 1.85. So give or take in the same ballpark. We also know that the guidance for Q2, the entire quarter of Q2 was not that much higher than Q1. So then I assumed that a potential like just minuscule 100 or 150 million increase for the AI GPU increases. Now I assumed that in Q3 there would be a much higher jump to let's say 2.5 or previously even 3 billion. And then in Q4, like straight off 3 billion on MI355X uh, GPUs. But going now, based on that number, into 2026, in which AMD will be much more competitive against NVIDIA, you know that MI355X is a step closer, MI400 will be yet another step closer, especially in the larger scale data centers. The big advantage that NVIDIA currently has is that when it comes to the large training models, like the state-of-the-art models like you know, Grok 4.0, Grok 3.0, or Gemini 2.5, or whatever open AI model that they are currently a state of the art of, uh, we know that those are essentially always trained on NVIDIA because NVIDIA can connect like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of their respective AI GPUs together. AMD hasn't been able to do that currently, but that's something that they're going to tackle partly with MI355X that is currently launching and next year more so with MI400. So that's why I would expect also that AMD is going to be much more competitive next year. So my own numbers led me to see a revenue of AMD around 18 and a half to 20 billion already next year, just purely on AI GPUs, which would mean double the number of my own expectations for this year, 
which is like almost three to four times AMD sales in 2024, which was five billion. So I was already like in the moon, but looking at like the numbers that we have now based on this report here, I'm starting to think maybe I'm way too low. It's actually really interesting to understand from the comment section for people that are potentially in this industry. Would are these numbers are correct? Like, would we trust this source here? I would say it's for me, it sounds a little bit unrealistic for AMD to have like 40 or 50 billion US dollar revenue next year. I don't think so. I might be wrong. But still, I would say that based on my own calculations, I would say that, yeah, maybe not 40 billion, but I mean, 25 or 30 now, especially since we know there's a couple of analysts mentioning that 25 billion number already. I believe this was this analyst here where he's talking about like potentially AMD getting 25 billion revenue already next year. So maybe they are up to something. Maybe they know something that we like, you know, normal people don't know. I don't know. So based on those numbers, in any case, gives me confidence to say that I'm very not confident that 18 billion at least is the bare minimum for AMD next year. I wouldn't be surprised at all, especially knowing that technically they're getting closer to Nvidia. So what would that mean actually for the stock price? This is really interesting. So going back to my own expectations, for example, for Q4 of this year. So we can see that in Q4, I'm expecting our revenue of around 11 billion of which uh, 5.7 billion comes from data center. So let's scroll down now to see how that segment is divided. In Q4, I expect maybe their AI GPs to be 3.4 billion and their Epic, so their server CPUs to be 2.3, 2.4 billion US dollar, maybe slightly less. Combined again, 5. Uh, what 5.7 billion or so US dollar. And then a total revenue of 11 billion. So 11 billion US dollars should give a rough earnings per share of around 1.8 to almost 2 US dollar per quarterly basis, right? So if you assume, let's say, I don't know, 1.8 times 4, that's 7.2 US dollar earnings per share. So if you take 7.2 earnings per share times like, I don't know, 30, let's say seven times 30, that's 210 already. So I wouldn't be surprised why this like analysts are already talking about a price target of like 210, right? So it's quite realistic in my opinion. In fact, quite, I would say, let's say on the, sh uh, on the short side, in my opinion. So going again back to my own numbers, now imagine how these numbers would look like for next year. Like if they're doing 11 billion in revenue already this year, of which of 5.7 billion coming from the data center, based on what I mentioned, which was in turn based on this report here, let's again go back to that uh, other table here. We can see that AMD's expected revenue of 18 billion for next year on AI GPUs. That's gonna be probably what, five almost, let's say almost five billion on average per quarter, significantly higher than the number that I had for Q4 of this year, which is like 3.4 billion on AI GPUs. So that's another like almost 2 billion in addition to that Q4, which already will be great. I mean, with those kind of numbers, I wouldn't be surprised if AMD does maybe 12, 13, 14 US dollar earnings per share for the 2026 year. And if you take any multiple on it, like let's say, I don't know, if you take a multiple of 30, which is like, in my opinion, very moderate for a company that grow in at this kind of pace. Like, you just like have to understand how quickly that kind of rate is. If you look at the data center revenue charted on this year from Q3 of 2021, so the data center is uh, divided in the blue numbers, which is the instinct ones, which is the AI GPUs, starting from Q4 of 2023, and then the epic one, which is the CPU with the red ones and then the total revenue of the company in white. And you can see how quickly the blue numbers is supposed to be surpassing the Epic numbers. And Epic is their you know, server CPUs, which are eating into Intel's dominant market share over the past you know, like three or four years. So that number is already going very fast, AMD's Epic server CPU share, but the blue ones is just like a complete different league. And then we haven't even charted, like, as I mentioned, like this highest blue bar is 3.4. Imagine the average of it being like up here somewhere at around 5 billion next year. I mean, the total AMD company revenue per quarter next year could easily be 
15, 16, 17 billion or so per quarter. That's like utterly like crazy if you think about it. So do I think the stock price is right now very cheap? For sure. Like I'm always investing a couple of years ahead, right? I mean, right now when I'm investing in AMD, I'm thinking about 2028, 2029. I could easily see this company going to three, four, five hundred US dollar for sure. I mean, maybe at 500, it's going to be what? even still less than 1 trillion or let's say around 1 trillion US dollar market cap. So I think that's quite realistic for a company this size with this potential. So anyways, that was a quick update based on this report coming out of how much AMD should expect in terms of revenue. So long story short, I know I don't think they're going to do like the maximum of that, which was, let's say, yeah, let, let's say around 45 billion. I don't think so, but maybe on the lower end 20 and the high end 35, somewhere there. So anyways, please uh, comment in the comment section. Thanks for your time and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.